Okay guys, uh, this is Juan again. Uh, welcome to video part 2 of how to create these grungy effects. Just a quick review on the previous video we just did how to set up our texture. So if you remember or if you haven't seen the video you can go and check the part 1 just to understand where we got the texture from. Now, as you remember I've got my JPEG version here which is that image um, on my desktop and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new document in Illustrator command N and I'm gonna have it landscape it really doesn't matter the orientation and you should have something like that yeah we've got I'm in Illustrator and I'm gonna feed on screen command zero the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get that image into vector so I'm gonna make it vector and to do that we're gonna go file I want you to go to the place option so place and go and find your JPEG image. You can put the PSD if you want to, but again, JPEG would be quicker to for Illustrator to deal with because it doesn't have any layers. And I'm going to place that. So so far so good. You can see that um, we placed an image. So we haven't done much on it. It looks pretty pretty much exactly the same as what we have had in um, in Photoshop. What we're going to be focusing in is on image trays. Now. You know, there's a fine line with this particular tracing option, and it's if you want something clean and smooth and curvy and not many anchor points, don't use this option. Uh, it can be really good, and CS6 has improved a lot in get really photorealistic approach into things. However, you need to be aware that every time you do it, there's a lot of anchor points going on, file size may increase, and you know, programs tend to crash. For this particular case, it's super handy because that's what we want. We want to create a rough texture and we need to have a lot of anchor points moving around. Now, what I'm going to do is I want you to go and on the top of your properties palette, this is CS6, I want you to go and click and say image trace. Now, Illustrator is going to start to do its magic and it's going to give us that sort of look, right? So, this is pretty interesting because we managed to get, get rid of all the grayscale and now we just have black and white and that's exactly what we want we just want black and white as I said to you guys before we need to think about masking and this comes back from uh, masking in Photoshop principles where black um, would hide and white uh, will, will reveal or vice versa and I just, I'm, I'm going to show you why I'm saying vice versa because here the way we actually uh, play with masks is a little bit different so what I'm going to do is, you can go to uh, the top of your properties palette, you got the image trace panel, where you can see six what happens is they're actually creating a palette just for tracing options. If you click that, it's just going to bring you this little palette, or alternatively, you can go window, image, trace, which is right there, and it just shows you that palette, yeah, like any other floating palette. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to go and increase my you can play with the threshold so I'm actually going 169 and then you can see how busy it gets probably that's too much I'm not gonna get it too busy um, depending on the texture you've got you can judge from from the, the, the image you're using I uh, just don't want to have a lot you need to make sure also that preview this preview it's on okay so if preview is ticked on you can see automatically how the whole thing is looking now, by default, this option of advance is going to be closed. So I want you to click the little uh, triangle. So that gives you the drop down menu. I'm not going to focus on all these. All I need you to do is this little option ignore white. I want you to click ignore white. And again, Photo Illustrator starts to do its magic. And basically, what we want to do is we don't want Illustrator to create shapes where it's white. We just want to have shapes on the black areas. And that's obviously going to help us to deal with less shapes and just pretty much get the information we need, yeah, which is black. But I'm going to show you this a little bit of a problem, not a problem, there's something we need to be aware with this. Now I'm going to close that. And if you go Command Y, you can see that really we don't have the shapes themselves. This is just a preview, guys. This is not the vector shapes themselves. You can see that there's no shapes there. Now to make them shapes, to make these ones shapes, all you need to do is top properties palette and there's a button right there that's just expand what that's going to do it's going to expand 
all that preview into vectors. Every single dot is a vector, and that would have, you know, the more you have, the bigger the file size would be, as you probably imagine. Uh, this one, I think it'll be okay. And now what I'll do is, so what I'll do is, I'm just going to select this um, image, and there's a problem. Well, not a problem, something we need to be aware of. As soon as you click, you can see that it doesn't recognize the color. It actually gives you a little bit of a question mark. And that is because this shape, even though we said ignore white, and you can see that when I click there, it doesn't select anything, still has some transparent, some transparent shapes. If I go Command Y to see my outlines, uh, you can see that it's got a little border, even though we don't see it there. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to your magic wand just there, uh, and as soon as you and I want you to click on it, so where that line is, where the transparency is, and you can see that it's selecting all those pixels. Now what do you think I'm going to do with them? <laughs> Correct. I'm going to delete that stuff. And the reason why I'm going to delete it is because now when I click on it, you can see that it selects the color black. That's what I exactly what I need. I don't want to deal with shapes that are transparent. I don't want to deal with loosen up anchor points. And now this is a healthy texture to play with. So I'm going to resize that, and I'm going to put it on the side. What I'll do is using the type tool T is the shortcut. I'm going to go and type grunge, and I'm assuming you know how to resize. So just shift to keep it proportionate. I'm going to center and I'm going to put it somewhere there. And using my typeface, I'm using Myriad Pro. I'm going to use some bold style. Very nice, bold kind of thing. The reason why I'm using uh, Myriad now is because I'm assuming that if you're using Illustrator, most of you guys or everyone, or everyone would have it. So it's pretty cool if you, if you want to have, if you want to try to follow these uh, prop like as what I'm doing. You don't have to. Just try to make it a little bit thicker, the typeface, so it doesn't look too crazy town. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to actually break this into three videos, just in terms of length and, you know, YouTube kind of uh, settings. If it's too long, I'm not going to be able to upload it. So this is the end of uh, video number two. So please join me to video number three, where actually we can start to make the opacity mask. So hopefully you enjoyed this brief one, and then on the next one I'll show you all the magic. All right, see you soon. <laughs> Bye, and so for that.